Okay. I'm, I'm oh, please. No. I might actually take my top off though, because I'm really hot. <laughs> Hi, hello, my name's Ollie Bliss and this is my channel Book Draw. For those who don't know, I enjoy looking at queer fiction and I make occasionally some little drawings out of it. Today I am joined by the wonderful and marvellous Julia K. Davis, <laughs> who is a lifelong friend. So first of all, these are the top five books which I have chosen for the year. If you want to check out um, Julia's top five, you will have to go over to her channel, and we will be switching around. So hopefully, it will hopefully it will encourage you guys to check out her channel and see both of our responses on uh, both of our channels. That'd be good. That'd be good. It will be delight. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> in order to compose ourselves, we're going to ask Oliver of his top five books of 2017. So the first one is "Call Me by Your Name." Yeah. So I don't know what this is. <laughs> I really loved this book because this was all about those first fleeting feelings that you have when you're completely and utterly besotted by somebody else and you have no kind of control over yourself, you just really want to like engage with them, you want to talk to them, you want to know everything about them. But um, because of the, the time which it's set in, he also has a distance of the fact that he wants to form a relationship with a guy. This guy is also older than him. This guy is also wrapped up in work-related issues with his father. So those are like multiple barrier barriers of stuff that he should not be engaging with. Yeah. But he's also like, this guy's really fine and I really, really want to sniff his socks and do all sorts of crazy <laughs> shit. <laughs> but like, the, I you've, mean... You've written in it as I've well. I've written in all of these. You will find... So you're an annotator. I do, yeah. Oh yeah, look, you've annotated in all of it. <laughs> There are multiple parts and passages in this book which are just so sublime with the detail and the phrasing. It's, uh, the, the character is actually far too mature for his age, but because his parents are academics, it's like, it's totally like real and you could see him having that personal insight to the situation. Yeah. Um, and that makes it even more richer, that he is aware of what's happening to himself. Whereas I think a lot of us will go through those beginning feelings of having a deep and meaningful crush for the first time and being at a loss of what it actually means, whereas this person knows what he's feeling. It's about 250 pages, so not that bad. Not that bad, yeah. That it's, bad. But, um, I mean, I took absolute delight in just reading it all in one and just like going along with the ride. It was total, total joy. Yeah. Now a major motion picture by Andre Ackerman. Is that how you say it? Yeah, Ackerman. Ackerman. Uh -huh. Sebastian Barry, Days Without End, Costa Book of the Year 2016. Yes. Yeah. Why is this your... Uh, well, I mean, it's a booker of last year, but I only read it this year. Uh, but what I particularly enjoyed about this is this, the epic scale of it in something which is so tiny and slight. Um, but I really enjoyed the fact that it's... Because uh, it's all around... <laughs> The story's all set <coughs> around uh, 1850s civil war in America, um, but the two characters that you are drawn to, they go through these series of different events, and they're quite traumatic, and, but also action-packed, um, but it runs alongside all these themes of nature, so they come up against a giant flood, they're, um, they're, there's like a blizzard, they're in, um, there's a giant firestorm, but they relate to what's actually happening in the, the story itself, so it's like the brutality of nature alongside... Mm, sounds nice. Yeah. Yeah, I've just seen here that there's a something going on, then a rattlesnake, and so, so it really is nature versus... Yeah, humanity. Just, and he's annotated all over this. <laughs> Again. You could never sell these on <laughs> <laughs> Why would you want to? I can't see. Are you pro or against annotation? I think, like, that's oh, a good I'm question. Oh, I'm pro. Pro, definitely. <laughs> but not to this degree, to this is... But then this I'm also else. pulling out and drawing from these. But they're, yeah, they're all The all artist nice. mind. Beautiful. <laughs> if you could be mine, Sarah Farazan? Sarah Farazan, yeah. <clears throat> ah, why so, is this in your top five? Because this is probably actually the top read, possibly. Of the year? Of the year. Top read of, top the, of the year. Top read of the What's year. This about? Uh, I read that as part of Diversifarm, which happened at the beginning of the year. Um, and it was because it was a lesbian narrative, it's set in Iran, um, I hadn't heard of the writer before, so I was just up for giving it a go. I can't remember who recommended it through Twitter, but I picked it up and like, was like, okay, I'll give it a go. I got the Lombardo Award, that like, like is the signal that it's going to be interesting, but it was really, really 
easy to read because um, it's focused as a, a YA novel but it's about um, these two characters who um, have had an ongoing relationship with each other but they keep it in complete secret because the reality is in Iran if you are caught um, in a same-sex relationship you can be hung. I had a lot more to say about Sarah Farazan but unfortunately uh, there was a moment where my sister-in-law said, wait, oh my god, and realised that uh, the cat um, may have leapt out the window. So we spent quite a while chasing around the house trying to look for it um, because we were very scared that he could have run away. Um, and when we came back, because we had drunk quite a little bit, uh, I missed off the end of Sarah Farazan's uh, review. But I have a full review, which you can go check it out. But I do believe this was the book of the year for me. So, the next book is Two Boys Kissing David Levitham. Yeah. Oh, co-author of Will Grayson, Will Grayson with John Green. Do you know that book? I love John Green. <laughs> love a bit of John Green. Love a bit of John Green. But why is this on your top five? Because it's told in such a beautiful, beautiful way. It's, uh, He's the... took the book, so it means something. <laughs> it's <laughs> delightful. Um, again, another YA novel, but this is very universal in its appeal. YA again! It is a bit of, like YA. A bit of YA. Yeah, but like it's not necessarily something you would pick up and go, this is well YA. Like it definitely oh, is something that uh, reads across different audiences. So why did you like it? So I really enjoyed this book because um, it was told from the perspective of the ghosts of gays who have passed, who are looking on a series of young male characters' lives in present times. It's focused around these two boys who are trying to conduct the longest kiss um, in the world recorded. Um, and that's based on fact, which you can see on YouTube. Alongside it, it also has a, um, other vignettes of stories about other boys who are forming new relationships. There's a guy who um, has been looking online at other men and got caught by his parents and then he's suffering with the fact that he just basically wants to shag around, form a relationship, but also find escape. There's a lot of young gay men will face these challenges in isolation and not have any support networks. Yeah. So this is like a place of solace for people who are trying to find those type of things. It's got a quote on the pack by Patrick Ness, so this is like <laughs> name dropping all over. Yeah. <laughs> sounds amazing. But uh, for all the right reasons, it's yeah. definitely not one of those ones where it's just like, it's bring a load of well-known names together and just present something that should be pushed forward. There's actual reason behind that. I think was it Patrick Ness did Monster Calls as well? Yeah, yeah a Monster Calls. Yeah. So we've got over. Ah. And the last one for the books is Juno Dawson's The Gender Games. Yes. Your hardback. <laughs> the only hardback to make it this far. Once upon uh, a time there was a girl. And now it's right. But, but well, yeah, so <gasps> It's signed! It's signed. <laughs> uh, so those two Smug is the word smug. Super smug. Um so basically I, I went to uh, a conversation between Juno Dawson and Simon Savage over in Liverpool. But I really enjoyed um, Juno Dawson's talk. I had read This Book is Gay before reading this book. But what I particularly liked about... Um, this Book is Gay? Yeah, that's so that was uh, a previous uh, book by Juno Dawson. By Juno Dawson, oh, okay. Which is all about kind of just exploring what it means to be gay, as in LGBTQIA+. Plus whatever and really just grapples with basic sexual education and wider kind of uh, stuff for younger kids so if if they're kind of going I don't know what I'm doing in the world mm. they can go and get this book and uh, it's great for parents it's great for young kids whereas this is like another level where it's specifically looking at gender from Juno's perspective in terms of having been both male and female um, oh. And is able to kind of go, well, this is my personal experience. And she really prefaces it with, this is just her story. She has done a lot of research and she's spoken to a lot of other people um, in reference to each of the chapters and they deal with diff different subjects. Um, but there were things in there which really, really made me think about gender in a completely different way. And like, not as a man actually, uh, more in terms of like how I interact with women. So like, like what? Uh, for example, a classic one in there, which made me go, whoa, I've done that, <laughs> is um, talking about pregnancy. When a woman is pregnant and people are like, oh, is this going to be your first and only or are you going to have multiple? And then like people challenge, like if they say, oh, I'm kind of good with one, then they're like, oh, they need siblings. Or uh, people pass on judgments yeah. and tell people yeah. how they should be behaving or what yeah. they should be doing. 
And like, you don't do that to a guy in the same way. Um, and um, she talks about the fact that like, previously she had to just deal with shaving, whereas now she's like shaving her armpits and her legs, applying all this makeup and she has to do all these touch-ups. And like, those are things that guys don't have to even think about. Mm. And just how other people treat you as that person who are just presenting themselves in the world. But it did, like, it has opened up um, and changed my perception of gender. I mean, she goes a little far when she said, uh, gender is a paedophile and literally... <laughs> and <laughs> but, oh my god! Yeah, yeah. but the, the sentiment is, in terms of actually saying it's really damaging to children, this, um, the, the whole approach that we have to enforcing these ways of behaving to children is actually constraining them in different ways. Oh so god. I totally loved it for that. Nice so of, the, of all of them, what was it you said? This one's your favourite one? Yeah, I think so. Okay. If you could be mine. Just because I think, for me, it's something so unrelated to anything I know or I'm aware of, and it's a window into that world. I would say it's definitely one window, and I'm sure there are multiple others. However, it's nice to experience a window and have some insight to that. I love how you do annotate all of the books. <laughs> All They're the all ruined. <laughs> They're mine. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs>